Today's show is about a turntable. Yes, it is. This turntable, the new U-Turn Audio Orbit Theory. Good name for a turntable. Anyway, I, I've been an admirer of U-Turn Audio for about 10 years. They make their turntables here in the US. They always have, and I guess they always will. But the thing is, this new one, the Orbit Theory, is all new. Now, it looks a hell of a lot like <laughs> the turntables they've been making for 10 years. But when you look closer, you'll see, well, it actually shares nothing with the original turntables, nothing at all. The feet, the plinth, the platter, the motor, the motor pulley, the tone arm, all new and all designed in-house. So there's no off-the-shelf parts. The price, by the way, I'll get to the price right away, is $999. And that price includes an Ortofon 2M Blue moving magnet cartridge. Now there is one option, you can get the Theory with a built-in phono preamp. It's called the Pluto 2. It's also a U-turn audio design for moving magnet cartridges. So my review sample had the built-in phono preamp. And when you think about it, if you have a turntable with a built-in phono preamp, it means that you don't have to have a cable that goes from the turntable to an external phono preamp. That's a big plus right there. And later on in the review, I compared the Pluto, the, the phono preamp, to a shit Manny, an original Manny, not a Manny 2, because the phono preamp that's built in is bypassable. So you can have it your way, as they used to say. But anyway, this turntable, like I said, it's, it's disarming because it looks so much like their other turntables, but it's not. So I'll start, at the, I'm, I'm gonna try to do this in some sort of order, and I'll start with the feet. The feet are adjustable, so you can level the turntable, which is, you think all turntables would have adjustable feet, but they don't. This one does. It has built-in sorbethane absorbers, etc., etc. But they're really nice. They feel good in your hands, and that's a theme that's repeated throughout this review, that the theory feels like a piece of equipment, you know? It's the real thing. Anyway, so the, the, the feet are nice. The plinth is solid hardwood. Now, the, my review sample was walnut. So this isn't walnut ver veneer over chipboard. No, it's a solid piece of walnut. And the, uh, there's another option for black, but that is solid oak. It's ebonized to make it black. But again, solid oak, not a veneer over chipboard, which is usually what you see. The machined acrylic platter, the edge of it, it has a groove in it to center the belt, and it comes with a nicely done black felt mat. And the belt itself, again, is new. It's a silicon belt that's seamless, meaning there's not a join where the ends of the belt connect. There's usually a little bump there. Not this time, a seamless belt. That's nice. And the motor pulley is machined aluminum, a step up from the usual Delrin or plastic that you usually see in turntables in this price class, $999. So that's pretty cool. They, they take great pride in the new electronic controller for the motor that reduces motor noise and electronically adjusts the speed 33 or 45. So you don't have to move the belt to change the speed. Uh, and the knob feel, because there's a knob to turn it on and off in the speeds. Really nice knob feel. And speaking of feel, the tone arm. Now the tone arm is uh, what they call molded magnesium. It has a molded magnesium arm tube. Again, a big step up from the usual aluminum. They say that the magnesium is better in, has better internal damping, blah, blah, blah. But again, magnesium arm tube in a $1,000 turntable, that's pretty neat. The arm height is not adjustable. In other words, you cannot adjust for your cartridge vertical tracking angle. Be nice if it was there, but it's not. But then again, Riga turntables, I think way forever, have not had, or I don't think most of them have not had, adjustable height. So neither does the theory. And the queuing device for this turntable uses a beautifully made aluminum lever. It's not plastic. It's it just, again, really nice stuff, really nicely done. There's a hinged dust cover. Warranty runs to three years. And if I said it earlier, but I'm going to repeat it one more time, 
U-turn turntables are designed and made in the USA with many, not all, nobody does it with all, US sourced parts. The arm tube, by the way, that magnesium arm tube is from a US vendor. Yes, and there will be an audiophiliac viewer system in today's show. Another concern though is the turntable's isolation from external knocks or footfalls and that sort of thing. Because if I tapped on the shelf below the turntable, the, the shelf that the turntable was sitting on, I could hear that tapping through the speakers, just ever so slightly, but it was there and I wish the turntable's isolation was better. Again, that's probably true for most Rigas or project turntables. Getting to the music portion of today's show, first record is this one, Herbie Mann, live at the Village Gate. And the Village Gate was one of my regular hangs in the late 60s, early 70s. This recording was from before that. I think it's from 1960 or 61. You know, one of the things that's really nice about this recording is that he had a big group and there's a lot of percussion. It's kind of an Afro-Cuban percussion groove thing going down here. And you really hear it in the quieter parts of the record. You hear the room, you feel the space because it, it almost sounds like there's minimal microphones, because remember, it's really early 60s, so they didn't have a mic on top of each instrument. So some mics are picking up more than one instrument, which gives it this very spacious sound, because you're hearing everything. You're hearing, the, you're hearing the instruments, but you're also hearing the room through those mics. And that really comes through on this record. And also, Return to the Village Game, another great Herbie Mann record. So anyway, wow, I was in it, and I was feeling it, and I was digging the theory turntable. I did take time to compare the built-in phono preamp, the Pluto 2, which you can bypass, and then I compared it to the shit Manny, an original Manny, not a Manny 2, because I don't have a Manny 2. And I did the comparison and I felt the two were comparable. I felt that the Manny was a little more laid back and you know, sweeter, but not as exciting, not as vivid, not as transparent. And maybe some of that was that you don't have to use a cable with the Pluto 2 that's built in between the tone arm and the phono preamp. But for whatever reason, I would say if you're gonna stick with moving magnet cartridge, cartridges, and unless you're gonna spend a lot of money on a phono preamp, meaning let's say $500 plus, the Pluto 2 would be definitely a solid place to begin your analog journey. Then I stumbled upon, you know, I, I like finding records in my collection that I haven't played in years. And this one, John Hyatt, Bring the Family. Damn. <laughs> Talk about rhythm and pace. This turntable definitely commutes energy and rhythm. And boy, John Hyatt, this was at his peak, by the way. I, I like to think about people in their peaks and they're, you know, grooving along and everything. But this is as good as John Hyatt ever got, Bring the Family. And you feel that energy roaring off the record. It's just amazing. He is a kill, just a great singer. Just everything about this album is fun. Yeah, it's a fun rock record. The very next record I played was this one, Elvis Costello's Get Happy. I should say Elvis Costello and the Attractions, his backup band for those early records. They were, they were like one. That, that band fit like a glove. I can't imagine a better band, no matter, pick anybody in the universe, to back up Elvis in the 70s and early 80s. The attractions were it. And they were, again, a rhythm monster, man. They were just pounding away. I saw Elvis a bunch of times in this time period. He was great live. And he's one of the few artists that was great live and is definitely great on In the Studio like he is on this album. So the theory was holding up, man. I was digging playing records, and that's what this is all about. I can't tell you how it compares against a Riga. I haven't had a Riga here in years, or a project, or any other turntable that would be competitive with it. I wish I had some here. I don't. These reviews, all of my reviews, occur sequentially. There's a review, then another review, and another review, and another review. And the only other turntables I've reviewed of late are Techniques turntables, and that the one I have now is $4,000. It's not really a fair comparison. But anyway, um, this turntable was just pulling me into playing record after record after record. And I don't need to do comparisons to know that that's a really, really, really good sign. 
then I wanted to quiet things down, and I played this John Fahey record. Now, John Fahey was an acoustic guitarist, master, and, I'm, and it's, it's quieter music. And I'm playing the record, and then I decided to play it over headphones, these uh, biodynamic DT-880s that I've just been falling in love with all over again lately. Because I wanted to hear if there was any noise issues, any motor sound coming through. No, this is a very quiet turntable. I tried another really quiet but super interesting record, this Niels Fromm record, Felt. Now, he has this thing about ultra close miking the sounds of a piano. You hear the mechanical part of the piano, the hammers, the movement moving. And I don't know, there's just something about his recordings that they're super close but they're also incredibly atmospheric and dense. They just create this massive soundstage. You just hear all this, the, the, the inside sound of a piano combined with all this atmosphere. I don't even know, I can't even begin to figure out how he does this, except you know, he has close mics and distant mics, but it's extraordinary. And again, the theory was pulling that information out of the groove. Really, really spectacular. Okay, now we're really going to get down to this. So, Steve, what do you really think of the U-turn audio orbit theory belt drive turntable? I think it's a very impressive piece of work. But beyond everything I just said before, I just want to focus a bit and direct it to you if you're just getting into vinyl. for Let's say you're in for a year or two. You have an okay turntable and you've amassed a small record collection. You have 20 records, you have 30 records or something, right? You're really getting into it. You're really serious about analog. You see a future with analog. This turntable is for you because it will allow you to grow without thinking about needing to upgrade. I mean, you might want to get a better cartridge down the road. That's true. But in terms of the turntable itself, yeah, I think this is a very solid piece of work. So it's a great investment in your future analog enjoyment. Okay, so now it's time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Okay, so today's system comes from Devin. This is a different Devin that's been in some of my videos of late. His room is amazing. His, he has 20-foot ceilings. Anyway, his speakers are Revel F226BE. His amp slash DAC is a Mark Levinson 585. His TV is a Sony 85 inch display. Anyway, nice going there, Devin. Okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. And I just want to say, well, if you dig what I'm doing here on the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. Patreon now accepts payment in dollars, pounds, and euros. And one of the things is, you know, some people have joined my Patreon and stay there for years. Some people come in for a couple months and they split. It's all good. So don't hesitate. If you really want to help support the channel, this is the best way to do it. And beyond pitching myself here, I just want to talk about my interviews. I've done a lot of interviews for the channel. And I, I think it shows how much I enjoy doing them. I love talking to people about audio and about their systems. When I do these interviews with audio files about their system, that incredible, because a lot of you guys don't know any audio files other than <laughs> when you look in the mirror, right? But here you can be in people's homes and hear them talking about their systems and talking about their journey. It's incredible. It's, I get excited about it and I've done this <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of times. Like when I interview people who are engineers and designers and stuff. That's fantastic. You know, I interviewed a fantastic mix engineer, recording engineer, mix engineer, and sometime producer, Bob Clearmountain. This guy is a legend. He's recorded the uh, Rolling Stones and Bruce Springsteen and the Ramones and just so many great acts. And he's such a down-to-earth guy. He was really opened up. I thoroughly enjoyed doing that interview. Not too many people have watched it four or five thousand I think which is a pretty pitiful number but I am so proud of doing that one so please check out these interviews uh, if you have yet to do so like I say they mean a lot to me 
And uh, with that, I can say, yes, if you like the show, like an episode, hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you, as always, for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.